Welcome to the Parish Church of Chelmerdiston in rural Suffolk. Chosen not because it houses a remarkable organ or because there is a flourishing organ outreach programme, but because the church is typical of many across the land. It has an enthusiastic vicar and a supportive parish council who would like to encourage greater use of its organ, but they don't know where to start in sharing this opportunity. Let's head on inside and see how we can start this project. Sharing the pipe organ from the inside out with new audiences is some of the most exciting and important work we can do as organists. This session will give you some first-hand hints on how to publicise the event, what to include to make a workshop enticing to ensure maximum attendance, and what resource materials are available to you to nurture new audiences and form us for tomorrow's pipe organs. With this in mind, this seminar will be targeted at promoting the instrument to a younger audience, but many of the ideas presented could easily be transferred to a more mature market. Where to start? Reasoning, why hold an organ event? What is the specific aim of the event? To encourage more visitors into the church? To allow greater access to the instrument? To increase the awareness of the organ locally? To ultimately aim for more people learning the organ? Be clear in your own mind from the outset. Audience. Who is the event aimed at? While being general is fine, consider perhaps two or three different strands for the day. An adult event in the morning, children perhaps are not going to be as motivated to get up early, especially on a Saturday. A demonstration concert, which consists of approachable repertoire, at lunchtime to appeal to non-musicians and those who have an interest in the organ. Followed by an afternoon session for younger people. Personnel, who will run the day? Whilst having a celebrity recyclist always look good to those in the know, it will generally mean nothing to the audience you are trying to appeal to. Try to use local musicians who already have a following and could potentially be cheaper due to reduced travel costs. You may consider using a music teacher from the local school to present the young person session. This will ensure that they help spread the news of the event. Budget. How much will it cost? Be realistic. How much can the venue afford? Get buy-in from the clergy and PCC early on. Presenting a pessimistic budget to them first will earn brownie points. Consider approaching other organisations to help spread the cost. More of this in just a moment. There is nothing wrong with charging a small admission to the various stages of the day. Parting with cash will perhaps give the day more meaning to those attending and will also help to reduce the financial risk. Partnerships. Don't go it alone. Talk to local schools and if possible, and you are confident, see if you can visit them prior to the event for a mini demonstration in an assembly. They may be helpful in helping spread the word to parents. There are so many opportunities that could arise from this collaboration, but for the sake of this seminar, let's keep things simple at the moment. Spread the news. Talk to like-minded local music organisations for help in promoting the event. The local music hub or county music advisor is usually a good place to start. Perhaps consider inviting the local scout and guide clubs. If you are targeting adults, perhaps investigate whether there is a local U3A group. Perhaps the diocese or cathedral could help in promotion amongst the other churches in the locality. You might even find that there is a music outreach specialist in your diocese. Engage in local dialogue. Don't forget how important local dialogue is. Good old-fashioned posters and cheap adverts in parish magazines and local newsletters spread the word more effectively than the more expensive newsprint. Get advice from other organisations who have experience in running these outreach events. Use your connections. Don't be frightened to ask for help. Remember to keep local organist associations in the loop. They may well already have established links within the local community and may be willing to help. There may be a local organ builder who is willing to donate or loan some organ pipes for demonstrations. 
Or better still, they may have a small demonstration instrument they will be willing to loan for the day. They can also be approached for sponsorship too. Spread the cost. Through engagements with like-minded individuals, you may find that they are willing to sponsor elements of the event. Small donations add up. Even someone paying for the refreshments or sponsoring a goodie bag, for example, to take away at the end of the day will help to push overheads down. Planning. Pick a suitable date. This is vital to ensure a large attendance. When promoting to children, for example, avoid exam time in May and June. Anything in December is probably best to avoid. Late July and August is holiday time. In January and February, the venue could be too cold, like it is now, and costly to heat. Avoid national events, World Cup finals, bank holidays. I speak from experience here. Plan ahead. Plan further enough ahead. Give yourself and those supporting you enough time to get on board with the project and to spread the news. Nothing will be gained from a short lead-in. Consult others. You will need a support team around you. Ensure you pick a few like-minded individuals who share your enthusiasm and are happy to muck in. Consider what skills they will bring to the party. Someone who has social media skills will be very handy. An individual who can design an eye-catching poster. Someone who can provide tasty refreshments. It's surprising what children remember from these types of events. If you are presenting the day or running the workshops, you will need a sidekick who can ensure that the next stage of the day is ready. Pace of the day. In my experience, children have greater attention spans if there is a good pace to the event. Too much downtime or slow flowing demonstrations by unconfident presenters can make the whole day a flop. Ensure that you make a timetable and the timings are stuck to. Cover the boring bits. In order to give the event credibility, it is important to consider whether you need a risk assessment for the event. Your venue may have a generic one which covers concerts. Does your church have a safeguarding officer? If so, make sure that they are consulted and that the event is properly staffed. If photos are being taken, make parents aware of this when they arrive. Some parents do not agree to having pictures of their children on social media. Data collection. It is useful to include in all publicity the need to sign up before you turn up. This data capture will ensure that you can communicate with parents after the event if organising a follow-up session, as well as having a contact list in an emergency. Just be aware, however, of GDPR rules. Food. Don't scrimp on refreshments. Consider having a pizza after the afternoon session and inviting parents along too. Children will remember this and it's also a good opportunity to get to know them and their parents in a more informal setting. Publicity. Keep it simple. Don't underestimate old-fashioned word of mouth. The more partnerships and like-minded individuals you talk to in the planning phase, the easier it is to help spread the word. Create something eye-catching. A poster designed in Word is not going to appeal to the younger market. Ask around if there is someone who can help with this. It's so important for your event to look professional. You may end up paying a small amount of money for a designer to mock something up for you, but it is well worth the money. At the same time, consider how your design can be used for adverts in local newsletters, perhaps a banner outside the church if on a busy road. Social media. Don't get put off by using this. If you're not a pro, then ask someone to help. Perhaps the local music hub will assist here. Consider targeted advertising on Facebook. You can, for example, be very specific to who you reach, parents of children aged between 8 and 15 who live within a 10 mile radius of your venue, for example. 
press engagement. Consider writing a press release. If this fills you with dread, and I absolutely hate writing them, then you may find that there is a press officer attached to your local cathedral or diocese who could help and be approached. Post-event. Consider how to follow the event up. Photos speak a million words, and newspapers love pictures. Ensure that parental permission is given prior to the event for children to be used in any form of publicity. So let's get down to the content for the day. I suggest three strands. An open organ for adults, a demonstration concert, and a come and play for young people in the afternoon. So the open organ for adults, this could be kept very simple and rather informal. Having the organ open for anyone to try with a helpful individual at hand to guide inexperienced players is always a good start. You may consider doing a brief organ demonstration at the beginning of the event. This could be a more informal version of what could be presented to the younger people later on in the day. The demonstration concert. It's so important for the repertoire for this event to be accessible. Perhaps avoid Schoenberg and Messiaen here and be brave in asking the visiting recyclist to keep the programme light, fun and short. Half an hour tops, with perhaps some dialogue with the audience throughout, helping them to understand what they're listening to. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the inclusion of arrangements of popular music, but some music written specifically for the organ always ensures a good balance. And then the come and play for younger people. An afternoon event for younger people, perhaps between the ages of 10 and 16 works best. Start with a fun organ demonstration. You'll see my example of this shortly. Followed by a chance for all to play. Ensure that children, if pianists already, bring music with them or have some simple melodies up your sleeve for those who don't play. I always find the Mission Impossible theme tune is an easy one to quickly pick up and for it to sound quite impressive. Depending on how long this all takes and your appetite for more, you can always progress into the mysterious world of improvising. For those less experienced with this, I find that post-it notes on specific keys work best and that you have a pre-planned set of ideas oven ready. However, remember what I mentioned about pace earlier on in this seminar. Conclude the younger people's session with an informal recital to parents and finish with a well-deserved pizza or pinot for the adults. Event follow-up. Are your punters happy? Ask for testimonials and comments from adults, children, parents, sponsors and partners. Lap up all of the positive comments and let them inform your planning if you decide to repeat this event again. Communicate. Communicate to all attendees what the next steps are. This may include a free trial organ lesson with the potential for enrolment into a diocesan organ training scheme. Be brave, do it again. If you can stomach it, try it again. These things are always easier the second time round. So to conclude this seminar, here is a brief demonstration on how I would go about introducing younger people to this small but perfectly formed instrument in Chelmodiston Church. Welcome to the king of all instruments, the organ. This incredible instrument can fill even the largest of buildings with sound. Just have a listen to this. And here's what makes the sound of the instrument so mighty. The keyboard, it looks very similar to a piano keyboard. However, the organ can have as many as seven of these. This is a small and wonderfully formed instrument with just one keyboard, also known as a manual. On this organ, it is called the Great Keyboard, where most of the loud sounds are found. But that's not all. There's even a keyboard which is played with your feet a pedal board. It is exactly the same purpose as the keyboards that the hands play. However, some of the very lowest notes at the bottom of this instrument create a quite incredible sound. These notes 
are so low it makes the whole building wobble. That's incredibly low. Of course, it wouldn't be a pipe organ without pipes. And look what I've done. I've just found one from inside this instrument, borrowed from inside. It looks a bit like a flute or perhaps a metal recorder, doesn't it? And what happens is air goes in this end and it makes a rather wonderful sound. Have a listen. Wow. 400 of these in this instrument. So when you press a key, it allows the air into the bottom of the pipe. This air moves really quickly up the pipe and forces out the sound at its mouth here. At this point, I would have some weird and wacky pipes on loan from a local organ builder that I'd perhaps pass around so the children could have a go on their own. Sitting at this organ is just like sitting at the cockpit at an aircraft. If you like pressing buttons and pulling levers, then the organ is definitely for you. Each of these stops controls a different sound. Let's go in search of some fascinating stops. Now, Obviously, on a larger instrument, you would have a greater selection of quirky stops. I tend to uh, use music that younger children can easily relate to. So on this compact instrument, I'd do something like this. I'd use the Wallace and Gromit theme tune to demonstrate this rather fruity open diapason. <laughs> And then perhaps an extract from the Wild Swans Suite, which has recently been used on a TV advert to demonstrate this very beautiful flute stop. And then we come to the next stop. There aren't many on this instrument, there are only five, but I would suggest, perhaps to illustrate the four-foot principle, something from John Williams' Bank of Music. So perhaps the throne room to demonstrate this four-foot principle. So then we move on to the mixture stop, which uh, has many different degrees of interest. I would probably use something along the lines of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, something simple, at various different pitches to demonstrate how quirky this stop is. Children usually find the tremolant rather amusing. It's quite gentle on this instrument, so you have to be, uh, you have to listen quite carefully. But perhaps I'd use a melody such as I do like to be beside the seaside, something that they can easily relate to. But we mustn't forget the pedals, of course. Remember that they are controlled by the feet and it's always great if you can have a camera down there or they can see by gathering around what actually your feet do. And I'd have something lined up such as this piece, which needs no real introduction. There's only one stop for the pedals on this instrument, but you can still make the whole building wobble. Uh, try where possible to make visual illustrations. For example, the bottom note of this 
pedal pipe, the 16 foot pedal pipe is extremely long, as tall as two double decker buses, for example. And then when you pull out all the stops, you unleash the most almighty sound. This is what gives the organ its nickname, the King of Instruments. I like to play something like the Eye of the Tiger to finish off the demonstration. Something like this. I would then, if possible, and if you know a tech person, venture inside the instrument to see the mighty musical machine in action. In some cases, it may even be possible to take some children into the organ. This experience is perhaps for them one of the more memorable during the day. So I hope you have found this presentation useful. Please do contact me directly if you would like any more help planning an organ event in your area. Thank you.